Good morning, friends. In Sunday's message, we talked about the absolute necessity of humility in order to be saved. After all, Jesus said in both clear and absolute terms that if we do not humble ourselves like the children of that day, we will never enter the kingdom of God. And therefore, humility, we must conclude, is absolutely necessary. We cannot be saved. We cannot enter the kingdom of God without it. But with that conclusion in mind, we asked if that means that we're adding something to the requirements of salvation, because we know that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. That middle part there, what we do for our part in this process, is that we simply exercise faith in Christ. We believe in him. We have faith in him. And even that faith is given to us as a gift by God himself, per Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. But that's it. We have faith in Christ. We don't do anything. We don't work for our salvation. We can't earn it. We can't be good enough to deserve it and so on. So are we contradicting those basic truths when we say that we must be humble to be saved? Are we adding something to faith such that we have to be to have, excuse me, we have to both have faith and be humble in order to be saved, to, to have faith and then behave a certain way in addition to that? Well, we also clarified, and I want to take extra time today to reinforce this, that the necessity of humility is not an addition to faith. It is actually an explanation of what genuine saving faith is in the first place. And actually, for the sake of illustration, this works for submission leading to repentance as well. Jesus began his ministry declaring, repent for the kingdom of God is near. In Athens, Paul addressed his audience, delivering to them the way of salvation, the gospel. And he said, God commands all people everywhere to repent. But that does not mean that we need to have uh, both faith and we need to repent. It's simply demonstrating that submission to God through repentance is an inherent and fundamental aspect of what saving faith is. If you have genuine faith in Christ, saving faith in Christ, then things like humility and things like repentance simply go hand in hand inside of that saving faith. Because once again, what we what do we already understand saving faith to be? Or possibly the question ought to be, what must we understand saving faith to be? Because unfortunately, I think under the wider umbrella of this thing called the evangelical church in our world today, I think we, we oftentimes don't even know what saving faith is. So here is what it is. This is what it looks like at the very least. It begins with the acknowledgement of one's own sinful state and therefore an acknowledgement that we deserve to face the just wrath of God against sin. And you can't do that without humbling yourself, without admitting that you do have sin, that you are a sinful person, as was, as I am I. And um, it continues by admitting that you cannot do anything to rectify your own situation. You can't fix it on your own. In and of, your, in of yourself, you are under condemnation and have no ability to save yourself. And that requires humility as well, probably even more so than simply admitting that you're a sinner. And then you've got to turn to Christ and put your trust in him and what he has done in his righteousness rather than yourself, believing that he bore the price of sin in his own body on the cross uh, and that he, died, uh, that he died, he was buried and on the third day, he was raised again from the dead to show that his payment for sin had been satisfactory, was acceptable to God the Father. And therefore, we must transfer all our hope of salvation off of ourselves or off of whoever else we might have been trusting in to save us and put that hope into Jesus Christ alone. And that requires humility as well, because we must admit that not only am I am I not capable of providing salvation, but someone else is, that Jesus is. And so we must go to him and rely on him for, for salvation. And pride will not let us re, uh, rely on someone else. Humility will, though. Humility allows us to take the attention and the reliance off of ourselves and put it on Christ. And of course, that leads right into how I mentioned repentance, submission in there. When we go to Christ, we must submit ourselves to him rather than ourselves to be saved. So having that humility flows right in the idea of then submitting to Christ and repenting of the sins which previously separated us from the Father, the very sins he suffered and died to take to pay the price of and to obey his command to repent. 
in this way, not only in the the process of salvation, if you want to think of it that way, but also I want to mention that throughout the remainder of the Christian life, we we must continue to be humble. Uh, for the sake of illustration, we must adopt the mindset demonstrated by John the Baptist. You might remember the occasion in which John was baptizing people, and not so far away, Jesus was overseeing his own disciples as they baptized people, and some of John's own disciples came to him, complaining that more and more people were going to Jesus to be baptized rather than to John. And after all, John got there first, right? He had a ministry of baptism before Jesus. So this isn't fair. This isn't right that more people are going to Jesus instead of John. But John himself explained to them that he had a role to play. He understood that role. It was a role of service. And in that service, he served the master. He, he was like a, a, um, a groomsman at a wedding whose, whose only job is to serve the groom, who was, who was in that you know, moment greater than him and must be seen as greater than him. But the attention is not on the groomsman. The attention goes to the groom, which led John to say of Jesus, he must increase but I must decrease. And that's incredible humility. John didn't have fortune, but he certainly had fame. Everyone knew who John the Baptist was, but now Jesus was rising in popularity and John is getting left behind in the public mind. He's fading from the public mind. And so often when people today get in a similar situation, they become bitter at losing the attention, losing the influence, losing that status. But John understood what he was there to do. His job was to point to and exalt Jesus, not himself. Therefore, Jesus must increase, and John was content to decrease. And that's the attitude we need to have as well. We were created and we were redeemed for the purpose of serving and glorifying God, to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, to honor and worship uh, Yahweh, most high and eternal God. He must increase, we must decrease. And we have the great joy, as we spoke on Sunday, of knowing that when we when we allow ourselves to decrease, when we humble ourselves, In the end, the Lord himself will be the one to lift us up. We do not exalt the Lord God because he is a demanding tyrant. We exalt the Lord God because he is worthy of that exaltation. We are worthy of humility. He is worthy of exaltation. And in his goodness, he will not leave us in our humiliation, but he will exalt us as well, to be in glory at his side for all the eternal ages to come, which should lead us now to humble ourselves all the more in light of his goodness and grace and mercy. Humility in genuine saving faith, humility in genuine Christian life. Friends, let us humble ourselves before the Lord, glorify him, acknowledge him as worthy, and joyfully and thankfully trust in the promise that he will lift us up in turn. Have a good and godly day, friends, and Lord willing, I'll see you soon.